additive, sorry. Dr. Ng Eng Po's main research interests are mainly on synthesis and applications of nanoporous silica based materials for advanced applications, particularly in nanotechnology, catalysis, energy, and also environment. Dr. Ng Eng Po also received many prestigious awards at national and international levels. In 2012, his research work has been selected as one of the top 10 breakthrough of the year by the Science Journal. In the same year, he was also the recipient of National Academic Award in Journal Publication category. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Associate Professor Chemist Dr. Ng Eng Po to deliver his sharing. Please welcome. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Clearly, Doctor. Okay. Okay, so um, um, good morning. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, Persatuan Zeolite Malaysia for inviting me to give uh, a talk uh, today. So my name is uh, Associate Professor Dr. Ng Eng Po from uh, School of Chemical Sciences, University of Science Malaysia. And uh, today I would like to uh, present my work entitled Recent Development and Green Concerns of Nanoscale Zeolites. So uh, as an... Okay. As an introduction, um, what are zeolites? So uh, probably some of you, are, uh, you have already known what is zeolite, but uh, here I would like to uh, give uh, some uh, basic introduction first uh, for the zeolites. So zeolites are defined as a, a microporous uh, aluminosilicate uh, material with a, a pore size uh, in between 0 0.3 to 2 nanometers. And zeolites, have a very high specific surface area, uh, which are sized uh, from uh, 300 to 1,000 meters square per gram. When uh, we measure uh, one gram of a zeolite uh, uh, with uh, uh, the total pore length, it has uh, uh, the distance of about uh, four times uh, longer than the distance uh, from the sun to the earth. Okay, so you can imagine how uh, how big is the, the pore length inside the zeolite. And uh, zeolites are uh, tunable in terms of their chemical composition. They are chemically, thermally, and mechanically stable. Uh, besides that, uh, the zeolites are eco-friendly, and most importantly, they can be uh, recoverable and reusable. Uh, as a result, zeolites are widely used in many applications, such as in catalysis, gas and molecular separation, ion exchange are processes. Um, recently, we are very uh, interested on uh, the synthesis of uh, colloidal zeolite because uh, by decreasing the crystal dimension, uh, we managed to reduce the diffusion path length. In addition, subdivision of uh, these materials into fine particles leads to immersed external surface areas and affects the magnetic, supramolecular, optical, electrical, and catalytic uh, properties. While more than 260 types of zeolite are known today, uh, only about uh, 25 types of uh, zeolite can be synthesized in nanometer scale. Uh, for example, uh, here I uh, list out uh, some of the nanoscale zeolite. Uh, for example, uh, for Aluminum silicate, uh, we managed to synthesize uh, 70 types. Pure silicate, three types. Uh, aluminum phosphate or silico aluminum phosphate. Uh, uh, so far, we have uh, four types of uh, nano sized zeolite uh, that have been synthesized so far. Uh, conventional zeolites, uh, which have a crystal size larger than one micrometer, are normally used as uh, catalysts, uh, adsorbent, and ion exchangers. And these uh, big uh, zeolite crystals are seldom used in nanotechnology application due to size restriction. On the other hand, a nanoscale zeolite, uh, which have size uh, from 10 to 1,000 nanometer, can be used in a nanotechnology application. This is because the zeolite nanoparticles, uh, they do not settle down uh, uh, inside the um, water for a very long time. And the colloidal size of the zeolite prepared in such uh, uh, 
um, design, it will uh, expand the, um, the application of zeolite uh, towards uh, atomic energy production, food, paper, drug delivery, ceramic, paints, pigments, electronic, recording material, lubricants, detergent, and so on. Conventional zeolites are normally synthesized in dense gel form and normally uh, these uh, crystals, they have multimodal particle size distribution. That means uh, they have a, a very big size and also very uh, small crystal size. And these uh, conventional zeolites, they are normally sedimented uh, in the uh, mother liquid due to large crystal size. And uh, on the other hand, for the uh, normal steel zeolites, they are normally synthesized uh, from clear solution uh, using uh, colloidal sources or molecular precursors of uh, silica, alumina, metal oxide, and also organic template. And this uh, organic template normally are used to direct zeolite structure formation to control crystal size and also to prevent crystal uh, agglomeration. In most cases, the synthesis of uh, nanosized zeolite requires a nucleation over crystal growth. Therefore, uh, low synthesis temperature is used uh, for the uh, synthesis of nanosized zeolite. Uh, for this uh, system, normally uh, it will give uh, the nanosized zeolite with monomodal particle size distribution. So it means that uh, it will give you a, a very uniform of uh, crystal size. Uh, in the synthesis. And also these uh, nanosized zeolite, they are colloidally stable in solution and you can use it for uh, other uh, advanced application like uh, uh, to prepare uh, thin film for the sensor and also uh, you can use it for uh, this uh, medical application. However, this uh, conventional synthesis method, it gives a very low crystalline yield and it is uh, difficult to scale up because uh, we use a lot of uh, expensive and harmful organic template and it makes uh, the synthesis cost uh, to become uh, more expensive. Uh, in order to solve this problem, several strategies uh, have been uh, developed in order to, uh, to tackle this uh, concern. Uh, for example, the first method uh, is called a template-free method where this uh, template-free method, no organic template is used and therefore we can uh, significantly lower down the uh, the production cost and it makes uh, the scale up process in industry to be possible furthermore uh, it also gives a high crystalline yield for this uh, uh, zeolite nanocrystal and they are more eco-friendly compared to um, conventional synthesis method so far we have successfully synthesized uh, ABW, ANA, LTL, LTA, uh, Fosiosite, Zeolite Beta, MFI, EMT, ETI, Zeolites using template-free method. And also we are also concerned about uh, the use of agricultural waste uh, such as uh, rice husk as a silica source. And this uh, approach uh, of uh, using agricultural waste uh, is considered as uh, turning a stone into gold approach because uh, we uh, we can use uh, this uh, not valuable um, material and then we can convert it into more valuable um, product. And uh, in this uh, work, we managed to uh, synthesize uh, zeolite LTL uh, from uh, right husk ash and uh, this uh, uh, approach, uh, we successfully uh, produce a LTL zeolite with a very high surface area. And so far, we also use uh, this uh, method to synthesize another six types of uh, nanosized zeolite, uh, which are LTA, Fosiosite, EMT, EDI, LTJ, and MER type zeolite. Furthermore, uh, we also use a uh, bamboo leaf uh, as a raw material for uh, preparing a highly um, pure amorphous silica uh, powder. And uh, by using this uh, um, material, uh, we managed to uh, synthesize a nanosized zeolite. And this uh, nanosized zeolite Y is a very industrial demanding zeolite uh, because uh, we can use it for uh, catalysis and also for absorption. And uh, here you can see that uh, uh, this is uh, the bamboo leaf. After uh, we treat it with uh, the nitric acid to remove all the impurities. And after that, we burn it at 600 degrees Celsius and it gives us 99.4% uh, of a very pure amorphous silica and we use it 
to uh, to synthesize nano size the zeolite Y, and these are the SEM and TEM images. Okay, then uh, we use uh, this uh, zeolite as an excellent absorbent for uh, methylene blue uh, dye remover. And we can uh, observe that uh, the uh, capacity for the removal is four to five times higher than uh, normal uh, absorbent. Furthermore, um, we also um, reported on the template free synthesis of nano size LTJ type zeolite. And as you know, LTJ type zeolite is a hardly synthesized zeolite because it is quite difficult to reproduce uh, for, for the synthesis. And uh, in this work, we managed to get a nano size LTJ type zeolite where uh, right husk as uh, was used as a silica source and uh, potassium hydroxide was used as an inorganic structure directing agent. And the uh, uh, crystallization condition uh, was at uh, 100 degrees Celsius, 30 hours. And uh, here you can see this is a uh, um, uh, field refinement. We can see that uh, uh, the data indicate that the LTJ type zeolite synthesized was uh, very pure. And also, um, these uh, nano size zeolite, they are colloidally stable, okay? Very colloidally stable. And also, the uh, it also gives a monomodal particle size distribution. So, where the particle size is about 220 nanometers. And these uh, nano zeolite are active uh, in a novel uh, reaction, giving 88% of a conversion. Next. Uh, this is about uh, uh, cesium uh, zeolite and uh, cesium zeolite is a very uh, difficult synthesized zeolite and the first work reported on this uh, cesium zeolite was uh, 1980s and uh, since uh, these are uh, 40 years, uh, there is not much of uh, paper reporting on cesium zeolite because uh, this uh, cesium zeolite, it requires very high temperature uh, crystallization for uh, for example 700 to 1200 degrees celsius and also it also needs a very high pressure which is more than 1000 bar and uh, recently we managed to synthesize uh, abw type cesium zeolite uh, under very mild condition at uh, 180 degrees celsius and also the pressure is just about uh, 30 bar huh? And then uh, what is more exciting is that uh, this uh, AB type zeolite uh, in a cesium form, we managed to get it in the nano size and also they are organic template free. Then uh, the uh, system is also colloidally stable. Okay, so uh, we can use it uh, for, uh, for many applications. Then uh, this uh, cesium ABW zeolite, they are active uh, catalyst in many basic catalyzed uh, reaction. For example, we test it in the uh, cyanoalkylation and it gives a very excellent uh, conversion. Furthermore, uh, we also use a multi-cycle synthesis method to synthesize a nanoscale zeolite. And uh, by using this method, we, uh, we can reuse the zeolite uh, synthesis waste solution. So normally after the synthesis, the zeolite waste uh, solution we will discard. But in this uh, technique, we will reuse all the zeolite waste solution for the synthesis of zeolite. But uh, with uh, this uh, requirement, you need to uh, make the chemical compensation back to the original uh, synthesis re recipe. Okay. So, uh, so far we have uh, uh, managed to synthesize the zeolite uh, ALPO18 and cesium ABW uh, nanocrystal by using this uh, method. And here I show you uh, one example of, uh, uh, of the synthesis of nano size uh, ALPO18. And here uh, you can see that the ALPO18 synthesized from the first cycle, second cycle, and third cycle, they have uh, almost a similar uh, crystal size. Also, they are also similar in terms of uh, uh, surface area, total pore volume and also the chemical composition. So uh, if uh, we use uh, the multi-cycle synthesis method and conventional method to synthesize uh, the same amount of uh, uh, zeolite nanocrystals, and you can see that the multi-cycle synthesis approach, it use less uh, chemical amount if uh, compared to the conventional uh, method. And therefore, uh, this uh, low chemical consumption, it will give us a low production cost. It will make the production uh, scale, uh, scaling 
process to be possible and also it also it is also more greener because uh, we don't uh, generate the uh, waste furthermore uh, for the multi cycle synthesis method uh, we also use uh, this uh, uh, zeolite waste solution to synthesize uh, different types of uh, nano size uh, alpo and uh, sapo material okay and uh, here you can see that uh, all these four types of uh, zeolites we uh, we synthesize it using this uh, zeolite waste solution and they are very uh, very fine and also very um, very home, uh, very uniform in terms of the the crystal size and we use uh, this uh, zeolite nano crystals to prepare a uh, zeolite thin film and this uh, zeolite thin film we we can use it for the uh, sensing application um on the other hand uh, there is also another type of uh, another synthesis method called ionothermal synthesis where this uh, method uh, we use an ionic liquid as green solvent and organic template so for normally for the hydrothermal synthesis method uh, we use a uh, water as a solvent and also another organic additive as an organic template but in this case for the ionothermal synthesis method we use an uh, ionic liquid and this ionic liquid can uh, function as a uh, two uh, it has a uh, two function one is uh, as a uh, uh, solvent and also the second uh, function is uh, organic template and this uh, uh, ionothermal synthesis method, we can perform it under uh, ambient pressure, which is a uh, one atm, because it has a very low uh, vapor pressure. And uh, ionic liquid has a low uh, toxicity, and it normally it will give us a high crystalline yield. And after the synthesis, okay, so this is uh, how we do the uh, the ionothermal synthesis. We don't use a uh, uh, autoclave, but we just use a round bottom flask and also. Uh, oil bath okay and after the synthesis uh, we can uh, extract out all the ionic liquid then uh, we can uh, reuse it after uh, the synthesis and this is uh, the uh, the example of uh, the nano size manganese alpo 5 that uh, we synthesize using ionothermal uh, approach um, zeolite nanocrystals they have uh, many applications uh, the first application is uh, to make them into a thin film and uh, we can use it uh, as uh, the sensor either as a molecular water sensor or uh, for um, hydrocarbon uh, sensor and this is uh, the very simple uh, approach to prepare um, zeolite thin film which is a spin coating where the zeolite solution and binder uh, was uh, deposited on the uh, silica wafer and then the this silicon wafer we will uh, we will evaporate it and then you will get this uh, um, zeolite uh, thin film and these are the SEM images of the zeolite thin film uh, where we can see that the zeolite thin film is uh, for this case uh, is which is about uh, 200 nanometers and this one is um, much thicker okay so the thinner the uh zeolite thin film uh the performance will be much better okay and also zeolites are also used in holography uh in our bank note uh, okay and this uh uh this work uh, we uh, observe that the smooth surface of photopolymer layers of uh, 6 to 10 nanometers thickness uh, can be achieved by deposit, uh, depositing about uh, 40 nanometers uh, zeolite nanoparticles and uh, we also observe that optimal holographic effect can be reached with a concentration of zeolite nanocrystal as low as 2.5 weight percent okay uh, next will be the uh, application of uh, nano size zeolite as eco-friendly antioxidant and this is a uh, part of my PhD work and uh, we we use uh, zeolite as an uh, antioxidant in the uh, car lubricant oil and in this experiment uh, we oxidize the oil uh, using uh, pure base oil and also the base oil uh, additivated with nano size zeolite and we monitor the oxidation process with uh, NMR, FDIR, total acid number analysis, colorimetry, uh, two-dimensional GC, GC. And 
these are the the image uh, of the oil after uh, we oxidize for two days six four days six days eight days and ten days with without zeolite and this we this is with a uh, ldl zeolite nanocrystals and we can see that uh, after 10 days the oil oxidized without zeolite uh, it turns uh, very dark uh, for 10 days you can see the oil is still uh, in the brown color okay then if uh, we see from uh, the round bottom flask uh, this is uh, uh, the round bottom flask uh, containing no zeolite and you can see there are a lot of uh, black particles uh, deposited on the wall of a uh, round bottom flask and for the oil oxidized with a uh, with nano zeolite you can see uh, there is very little uh, black particles and also uh, if uh, we see from uh, the gc 2d gc gc the oil oxidized without nano zeolite uh, you we can see very intense peaks due to uh, aldehyde and carboxylic acid as compared to uh, the oil oxidized without nano zeolite. Therefore, we can conclude that zeolite nano additives slow down oxidation rate. And also, we are interested on the antioxidation performance uh, between traditional phenolic antioxidant and uh, nano size zeolite. And we study this uh, 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 oxidation uh, performance using uh, NMR. And here, this is uh, the pure oil, uh, the new oil. And this is uh, the oil oxidized without any antioxidant. Uh, we oxidize for two, five, and eight days. And you can see that uh, the intensity for the aldehyde and carboxylic acid increases. Huh? Okay, so that means uh, uh, the oxidation has already uh, taken place here. Uh, for the traditional antioxidant, um, the, the lubricant oil, you can see that uh, the intensity is much lower than the oil oxidized uh, without any uh, antioxidant. Okay, so that means that uh, this uh, uh, this oil it contains a less, low lower degree of oxidation as compared to the virgin oil. Uh, more surprisingly, if uh, we compare the oil oxidized with nano zeolite with uh, uh, the oil oxidized with traditional antioxidant, we can see that uh, after eight days the intensity. The peak intensity for the carboxylic acid and uh, aldehyde is much lower than the oil oxidized with a traditional antioxidant. Therefore, uh, we can uh, conclude that nano size zeolite have better performance in uh, stopping oil oxidation than traditional antioxidant. And also, um, the nano size zeolite is also uh, widely used now uh, in um, medical research recently. And uh, this work uh, was uh, collaborated with uh, Stanford University and University of Kong uh, in France. And this work is very important because uh, we want to know uh, the toxicity of a nano size zeolite before we can use it in uh, medical research. And in this, uh, this work, uh, we have uh, studied uh, three types of uh, nano size zeolite uh, in uh, toxicology research, uh, namely EMT, Fogelside, and LTL zeolite. And so far, we found out that the uh, zeolite nanocrystal they have no uh, toxic uh, toxic effect on a uh, human body, and uh, therefore we can use it uh, in drug delivery uh, agent, a blood co coagulant, MRI contrast agent, biomedical sensor. And lastly, zeolites are also uh, used as high performance catalysts. And here I uh, I show you some of the example that. Uh, um, that the work that have been done in our laboratory. For example, a uh, novel nugget condensation, we use a uh, potassium LTJ uh, non non size zeolite uh, for the synthesis of uh, jasmine aldehyde, giving a very high uh, percentage of yield. Uh, oxidation of phenol, we use uh, iron uh, impregnated on a uh, uh, potassium LTL non non size zeolite for the synthesis of a uh, uh, hydroquinone. Henry reaction of a uh, benzaldehyde using a cesium ABW uh, zeolite um, in this uh, reaction it gives a 82.6 percent yield of a uh, one phenyl two nitropropane next will be uh, deoxygenation of a uh, triolein to uh, produce a uh, diesel we use a uh, nickel nickel oxide impregnated on a uh, foliocyte zeolite Y nanocrystals and then for uh, decomposition of dye we use a uh, silver dope on uh, foliocyte zeolite Y then uh, for outdoor condensation, um, potassium zeolite F nanocrystals. And in this case, uh, we use a microwave 
uh, synthesis uh, and it gives a uh, 71.6% yield of uh, jasmine aldehyde. Um, next will be cyanoethylation of methanol. Uh, we use a uh, potassium MER zeolite. Uh, in this uh, condition, uh, we use a uh, non microwave instant heating uh, where we use this uh, reactor monowave 50 and it gives a uh, 94.1% yield of a uh, 3 methoxypropyl nitrile. And next will be the Perkin condensation of benzaldehyde to, uh, to produce our cinnamic acid. Uh, it gives a 90.2% yield uh, using this uh, non microwave instant heating. And then a uh, Kleisen Smith condensation of uh, benzaldehyde and uh, acetophenone to produce a uh, chalcone with a yield of 82.2% uh, yield using a um, mesocesium uh, polyoxide uh, using this uh, non microwave uh, instant heating uh, method. And for the conclusion and future prospects, uh, zeolite chemistry is complex, making preparation of uh, nano zeolite intricately uh, challenging. Uh, recent progress brings bright future to this uh, unique and versatile nanomaterials. And next, a uh, clear strategy to optimize their synthesis makes them more greener, cost-effective, and practical to industrial production. Useful strategies for functionalizing zeolite nanoparticles open up uh, possibilities of using this nanomaterial in many areas. Clear evidence on human safety permits them in emerging application use in future, including biomedical application. And here I would like to thank all of my uh, collaborators here, uh, my former supervisor, uh, Professor Dr. Svetlana Mintova, Professor Do Dato Dr. Halimaton Hamdan, all my collaborators here, my PhD students, uh, my master student, and also a uh, School of Chemical Sciences, uh, USM. And uh, that's all for my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, you may ask me or you can uh, email me. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much to Associate Professor Dr. Ng Epo. It was a very interesting presentation of nanoscale zeolite and its uses. So I think everyone will be enlightened to know more about zeolite after this. So we have